Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop. This one is an HP 15-EC series laptop and in this video I'm gonna go over how you can open it up and how you can upgrade the storage in here because they do get shipped out with a 256GB SSD or maybe they don't some of them. You have to upgrade it directly with HP but if you want to save a little money you can get the H hard drive version with a mechanical drive and you can upgrade by yourself to a SSD drive. I'm gonna go over what's the combination that you can have and how you can do it step by step. Just remember when you do this upgrade you're not gonna have any operating system on a new drive you have to install your freshly installed in Windows. I made a video how to create Windows 10 USB boot drive. I also made a video how to install Windows 10 on your HP laptop. Those links can be found on my video description in case you need it. Now let's go over the tools that we're going to be using and the combination that you're going to have. Down here in this laptop, this laptop supports a mechanical drive and SSD 2.5 inch in drives and which are these ones over here. This is a mechanical one uh, or it supports a solid state drive which are the SATA ports. And these are 2.5 inch you can go up to two terabyte on a mechanical drive because after two terabyte the thickness it gets really thick the profile and it will not fit so you can go up to two terabyte of mechanical drive 2.5 inch SATA or you can go up to four terabyte I know that there is a four terabyte maximum right now I have seen it in solid state drive because solid state drive they are always low profile so it doesn't matter if you go to up to four terabyte and they have the same connector which are a SATA power and SATA connector so you can have uh, either one of these in there or you can have also a NVMe M.2 SSD drive in there you can get the version with a mechanical drive and you buy your own SSD drive on Amazon I'll leave the Amazon link in my video description you can purchase a good brand the really reliable ones and you can put your windows on this ones because the NVMEs are much faster than regular SATA uh, con uh, connectors. They have a little higher bandwidth. So I recommend you guys to put on your NVM your windows on your NVMe drive. Grab a 500 gig or a terabyte or a 4 terabyte if you want to go over the board. And I would recommend to put a 4 terabyte or 2 terabyte NVMe and place a mechanical drive, a 2 terabyte mechanical drive in there. Because the mechanical drive, they do not wear down on the write or reading speed on a storage. But solid state drive, they do get worn down. If you start downloading lots of movies, erasing, downloading, they just wear down really easy. So I recommend you guys to have a mechanical drive, 2TB, and NVMe drive for your Windows programs and everything else in here. So yeah, let's open it up and see how you can place all this in here. The tool I'll be using is an iFix screwdriver set. I like this tool set because they are one of the best screwdrivers out there. These are made out of S2 class steel. You're gonna be using a Phillips number zero. If you get the Pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, grab a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. All right, down, you want to power off the laptop, back up your files on external storage or wherever you can. We're going to remove the bottom cover by removing a few screws. There's a long screws and the short ones. The long ones are the four at the back end of the laptop right here. And the short ones are three of them. They're in front end of the laptop. One, two, three. So go ahead and start removing these screws. Keep them in a different pile so you don't mismatch them. It'll be really hard to mismatch this ones, I guess. But they're really long and really short. And also, if you guys like my videos and you want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking that like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It will be a great motivation for me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. Alright, once we remove the screws, now you're gonna grab your opening tool and I'm gonna start I'm gonna start from one corner from the power jack connector right there. So we're gonna stick the guitar pick right after this hinge right over here. You're gonna stick it right there about one or two millimeters right in there. 
and we're gonna flip it towards the outside and we're gonna hear a tiny click that's what you want to hear and that's where you can see the openings you want to work yourself every one centimeters towards the corner front work yourself to the front end of the laptop go all the way to the other corner all around you want to do the same thing until you feel like the cover is coming loose you want to hear those clicks once you did the front the sides the back you, you can do the back but no need to because as long as you do the front you want to grab it up and wiggle it around and it will release automatically the back side so there we have the bottom chassis once we remove this one you're going to see the mechanical hard drive right away right away here and you're going to have a hard time finding the ssd because it's hidden right under this cover right here so you want to peel it off in this client already upgraded through hp website that's why they oversell this one they put their own brand but yeah, honestly i'd rather have a samsung ssd than have an hp ssd because the write speed on these ones are i mean durability on these ones are really low so people always say you have you must disconnect the battery before you do anything you do not need to disconnect the battery to do anything but for those paranoid people i'm going to show you guys to disconnect the battery you want to put your fingernails right by the jack right here and you want to pull it backward and that's what you want to do once you pull it back and you want to use a tweezer to bring it upward so that's how you can disconnect the battery but honestly there is no point because if you disconnect the battery you power on you're going to get a message saying the cmos is reset to the default so to keep the bias configuration do not disconnect that leave it the way it is just have a little bit cautious all right to disconnect the nvme drive there's only one screw right here you want to remove so remove the m.2 screw right there and the ssd will come out in 45 degree in this angle you do not want to yank it upward if you bring it up you're going to crack the dim or you crack the ssd you want to pull it back the same angle that it came out so pull it back this way so there's your ssd and i don't know where's my other one i'm not going to upgrade i'm just going to show you that all the ssds are the same these are nvme ssd get the nvme one because these are pci express these are way faster than the regular m.2 the nvmes have one notch right there so grab your nvme make sure the notch on the nvme matches the notch right on the dim bring it in 10 or 15 degree push it all the way towards the dim and then you want to bring it down towards the motherboard and put the single screw right on top there we have it now you can tape it out on top to remove the mechanical drive you want to lift up this lock upward 90 degree and you want to lift up the flex cable in 45 degree upward and pull it out in 45. the reason is because it has a little tiny earlobes on the side of the flex cable it has to go in 45 degree through the jack and set it down and then lock it or in case you want to remove it now to remove the hard drive there's a four three screws holding it there's a metal bracket called a caddy the caddy holds the hard drive in place there's one two three screws so go ahead and remove these three screws all right once you remove the three screws now you can simply pick up the hard drive and remove it is that one terabyte western digital you might have a different one is that low profile you can put a two terabyte uh, hard drive or you can put any size ssd in here to put the ssd or hard drive in here you want to remove this connector right here the adapter you want to put your don't pull on the cables put your finger right on the adapter right there and pull it backward and remove this adapter once you remove the adapter now we need this caddy the caddy is being held down by four screws one two three four so all you need to do is remove the four screws remove the bracket put the bracket on the new one make sure the orientation for the SATA is, they are the same and put the four screws on the ssd or on your new hard drive once you replace it you want to grab the caddy i mean the adapter you want to make sure the the connectors that are matching the connectors right here and it slide it right through once you have it in there now you can bring it evenly make sure the screw holes match put it right in place 
and put the three screws that you removed from the caddy. To put this flex cable in, you, you want to make sure the lock is open. So if your lock is closed, open up your lock, 90 degree upward. You want to grab the flex cable. I'm going to grab it like this. You want to bring it down in 45 degree angle until the ear lobes goes right through the jack right in there. You see this ear lobe right there? And this one right here, it goes in. And then you want to push it towards the motherboard. Pretty much set it down. And then you want to just lock it in place. All right, once you did that, pretty much we are almost done here. All you need to do is to put your USB, Windows USB, and install your Windows on your M.2 and use this as a second storage. If you have disconnected the battery, place the battery back in, just slide it right through. Grab the bottom cover, put the bottom cover on top, just pinch the top and bottom, make sure it clicks in, the back end, all the way in. Just grab it if it's little openings right there. Nicely pinch them. And the last thing would be to just put the bottom screws at the back and the front end of the laptop. I hope you guys liked this video and it helped you guys out. If it did, you know what to do. Click that like and subscribe to support the channel. If you guys have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish up putting the screw and that should be all. Actually, let me see if I have my Windows 10 um, USB here. I'm gonna actually power on and show you guys how to get to uh, uh, how you can is, is install it. I don't know if there's any battery on this laptop, but let's try it out. So I'm gonna power on. Grab my Windows 10 USB boot drive, plug it into any of the USB port. And we're going to power on and we're going to tap on escape. Keep tapping on escape. Because we remove the battery, it might take a little longer. So keep tapping on escape until you see a menu showing up. There's a CMOS checksum invalid. CMOS will be reset to default. That's because we removed the battery. Just press enter. And keep tapping on escape. Alright, now that we got the menu here, it says F1 for system, F2, F9. We're going to choose F9 for the boot menu. So press F9. Let me see if I press it nicely. F9. And from here, we're going to choose Kingston Travel Data, which is my USB. And... It's going to take me through the Windows installation step. And again, that's really easy. You see how easy that was? And you can install your Windows within 5 to 10 minutes on this laptop. They are really, really fast. And pretty much, it's really worth it. And there we go. I'm already on the installation process. So follow my videos to properly install your Windows. Check those links in my video description in case you need to. Again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video.